Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so this one is supposed to be the majority of the work actually done by one of my friends, Long, but he not be able to make it today. Uh, so <coughs> this one is the agenda for today's talk. Uh, so why is the talk on this one? The, the thing is that the, most of the modern uh, operating system nowadays have a lot of different protection for uh, security vulnerability. So you can see there is like non-executable with NS, uh, arrest space ran layout randomization. Uh, they have the ASCII ML address mapping, uh, stack protector or whatever of compilation protection. And <coughs> all of this protection make uh, some kind of like explicitation harder and especially for the technique like return oriented programming uh, with the really good uh, arrest space randomization, then actually it will be pretty hard to do that. Uh, <coughs> so in this talk, actually we are uh, proposed and talking about one of the practical and reliable way to uh, with combination of multiple different techniques uh, to be able to bypass NX uh, stack, memory mapping, salary, uh, ASLR, ASCII amount protection on X86 uh, operating system. Uh, basically, we are demonstration is based on Linux, but we have the working uh, stuff for BSD, Linux, Mac OS, and uh, the upcoming one is also Windows. <coughs> Uh, so uh, basically, we use the multi-state uh, ROP uh, combination techniques to be able to uh, to have some of the stack zero will, to bypass the protection and stack one to do whatever uh, the, uh, you want to do. And uh, in order to automate all of this kind of things and make it very easy to people to use, and we have the tool where we can have the practical ROP get catalog and also support the automation and many others like very easy to do the stripping. Uh, and this talk is not talking about the IOP. Uh, so actually we only use IOP for bypass some of the protection. This one is not really talking about the return oriented programming. Uh, I also not going to talk about like uh, ASLR implementation flow or whatever information leak, uh, compilation protection like stack protector and things like that, or mandatory access control. So I'm not going to talk about this kind of thing. So this one I will try to go very fast because it's just basic things and just a recap. Uh, this one is just the basic uh, buffer flow problem. And this kind of thing, I think, is simple things. Uh, so nowadays, like for example, the Linux, we, they have the, a lot of different mitigation techniques. Uh, like I mentioned before, non-executable, like you have the PAS or SSU whatsoever, uh, with the support from the hardware itself, or by the CPU with NX or SD bit, or by software emulation. Uh, there is, uh, the RS space layout randomization, like ASLR, where it supports the randomized mapping of the stack, heap, uh, memory mapping, shell library, and also the application bay, which is require the compiler support with the slot PIE things. And <coughs> like accessible from Red Hat, they also introduced the ASCII armor mapping, uh, where on the shell library, actually will be relocated in the, in the ASCII AMO area, which is the first 16 megabyte. And uh, which means the library address start with the known byte. So actually you can stop like, you know, uh, having the known byte in the return. So it will be a block kind of like return to libc kind of attack. And also there is the compilation protection like the stack protector, SSP, Propoli, Fortify source, different kind of things where they put like stack canary and stack cookie. <coughs> so for example, this one is one an assemble of 
uh, how the memory mapping. Uh, you can see here the address of the library is starting with known by, which is the ASCII among uh, things. Uh, this one is not executable in this space, which is NX. And uh, here is no PIE, so that's one. The, the, the binary itself is mapping into, uh, it's, it's not randomized for the, for the binary itself. And ASLR is for the stack, for the heap, and things like that. So every, every time you run, actually, it will load in different address. So this one is just a quick uh, overview of like this one is the result of the of the the PAX test on the uh, Fedora uh, 13 and the Gen 2 Harden with the Harden uh, kernel 2.632. So you see on the randomization, this one the first one is for the Red Hat and the second one for the Gen 2 with the PAX and GR security patch. So you can see. <coughs> For this kind of thing, actually, for like about like 13, 16 uh, bit, it's actually pretty easy to to prove it. And there is there is even some implementation flow on the previous kernel where actually you can try like about like 40, 50 times. And actually, is, there's some address will be repeated. Uh, so bypassing this randomized address space actually depend. It's very dependent, right? It's depend on how the SLR implementation, uh, the imp environment factor, and how the vulnerability as well. So this one is the bit. Also the recap on the basic uh, stack overflow and code injection. I just skip this. Uh, return to libc we is a simple thing where you return back to the library function. Let's say, for example, return back to the system. And uh, like mentioned before, this will be pretty hard with the ASLR and ASCII model because it's actually the libc function itself is randomized, and uh, the stack also random, so it's it's pretty not easy to like you know the location of the argument on the stack, and you have the problem with the non by and also it's pretty hard, and also because of non by it's hard to make the chain return to libc code. Uh, ROP is the recently, in the last two years, actually it's a new term coming up. So, but actually it's based on the return to Lipsy and borrow code chunk kind of idea, which is uh, basically is like uh, the term of the gadgets is like the sequence of the instruction ending with the return, uh, but it's not necessary to be ending with return. I mean, can be ending with like jump register or something like that. So here is uh, some example of the gadgets, like for example, load a value to register, we can pop something register and return. So you can actually load the value into the, the EBS register. Or for example, this one, you can leave like uh, seven, eight, eight byte from the, from, the, from the stack pointer, or you add some value into the memory location, for example. So this, this Things is going to get, get in the term of the ROP. So with the ROP, uh, we, uh, we are always saying that with the enough number of gadgets, actually we can do the uh, Turing complete uh, like arbitrary computation. Uh, however, in the practical, the problem is that uh, actually there is very limited number of gadgets where you can really use from the vulnerable binary. And the library have more gadgets, but however, the randomized whatever library mapping or the ASCII model actually make it very difficult to do like uh, chain or whatever read ROP payload and thing like that. Uh, this one is just a, some summary on this where in fact, uh, this kind of thing actually depend very dependent on like how the binary, how the vulnerability, and the thing like that. And with the full protection like PIE, stack canary, a scale mall, or thing like that, uh, there is uh, generally is pretty hard to exploit the binary with like enable full kind of protection. Uh, however, it's not; it's still dependent like 
in some case, for example, like remotely, you may be able, like using some fog or whatever, you may be able to brute force it. And there's some way to brute force it much faster. Uh, like let's say you don't uh, try one by one, but you try, try for every uh, byte, and like you may, you don't need to like try a lot of time in order to to figure out what is the right value for the let's say the stack cookie, the base address of the binary and thing then. Uh, you can do the normal uh, exploitation once you figure out the, 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 the address. Uh, so now I will move into the next one, which is the combination uh, techniques where we're trying to, uh, to implement it to bypass some of those protections. Uh, the basic idea is to build a generic test zero payload where it can help to bypass like you know, stack memory mapping, uh, randomized, uh, then uh, NX and ASCII ammo protection uh, with the idea of using very, a very like, minimum number of the ROP card gates inside the binary. <coughs> the reason, like I mentioned before, uh, ROP in general is nice to have. However, the, the number of real ROP gadgets inside the executable file is limited and uh, it's very dependent on by binary and binary. So <clears throat> the idea here is just use only a few which is available on most of the binary. Uh, for example, most of the binary compiled in the, which GCC will have enough number of gadgets to build the, the stack zero. And from the stage row, it will be able to load the full and the complex stack, the next, the stage one payload, which is you can put anything inside the stage one. So the stage one payload could be anything, could be the fully ROP cell code, could be the chain uh, libc code, or maybe just the normal cell code. Uh, so that is the basic idea of the tool, of the methodology. Uh, so the first thing for the stage zero, so the idea of, uh, of this one is the first thing actually we are trying to propose a way to build, uh, the first thing we are we're trying to build a, a, a stack, a new stack at the node location. So uh, with, this, it, with this way actually you can be able to full control of the stack. You don't need to worry about whatever randomized stack are any longer once you switch to the new stack. And it's, uh, it's easy to control the function argument and whatsoever argument on the, on the new stack uh, for the chain return to libc or ROP uh, <coughs> cell code. And also you can control the stack frame. So here is an example of like the benefit of of having a, a, a stack in the fixed location. For example, we choose this address, which is in the data session or some, uh, yeah, in the data session to use at a new location for the new stack. And from this one, you can see you can control the next text frame and things like that. And you actually can control the whole things easier. So the location for that is just any reliable location, which is, let's say, the data session or something like that. Uh, for example, in the binary, you can use like this session, like data, BSS, that kind of thing actually can use for the, for the stack, location of the stack. And, <coughs> and actually, the stack zero is, the, the purpose of the state, of state row is actually to transfer the real, the real payload of the state one into the new state. Uh, so in order to transfer the state one payload, we can use some of the ROP like the load read. Basically, the way we're trying to implement is uh, using just a minimum number of ROP gadgets. So basically, we only need to have something like load register, store memory to address, to register, and that one is just almost enough uh, to do the things. And uh, <coughs> so the question is, where is the data of the uh, state one payload? So the payload itself, the state one payload itself is like, let's say I have like the state one payload is 100 bytes. Uh, so how, how can I transfer that 100 byte to the new state? 
So the idea is that we actually reduce on the data inside the binary itself. So uh, the arrow item is like uh, we can use the string copy or spring app or whatever things and we return to those functions and trying to copy the, the data we want from the binary itself into the new stack. Uh, so this one is the how, how, how the algorithm works. So the in, input for the stack zero is a stack one payload and the output is the stack zero payload which be help to transfer the stack one payload into the custom stack. Then after you transfer the complete stack one payload, then it will just switch the, the stack frame. Uh, how it can do that? So I mentioned before, uh, let's say the stack one is 100 bytes, so I just looking for the first byte, second byte, the sequence of the byte uh, in the stack one payload, and I searching for those bytes in the binary itself. So when I find the, 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 the data, the similar data in the binary, then I will generate a string copy code uh, where with the source is the address of the byte file in the binary and the destination is custom state. So, and keep repeating until it uh, finish the state one. Uh, so after the state row uh, done right, actually you will have a new custom state with the full state one payload over there. So for example, here is an assemble of uh, state one to transfer slash bin slash cell into this address. So assuming that this one is the uh, some location in the data which is reliable and where I want to build the new the new stack. Uh, so here is the PLT of the string copy, and uh, I have some gadget to do the the load to register like load the value into EBS, uh, EBP and uh, EBP is just, you can just keep it and return. So for, for example, something like this. Uh, so what I can do is I can uh, find the value in the binary itself. So I know that the value uh, 2F is in, uh, in this uh, address. So I can generate a pay, the, the, the payload for, for the state zero is something like the address of the uh, destination, then uh, destination source, and the next stack frame, <coughs> the B3 is actually the pop-up red, which is the, 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 the gadget for the load register. And this one is the uh, PLT entry of the string copy. So I keep generating this one until it's finished. So on the, until on the stack zero, uh, sorry, on the stack one uh, payload already like a uh, copy into the new stack. So, at the end of the stage zero, actually, uh, we need to, to switch the control to the new, uh, the new, the, the new stack we just copied on the data of the stack one. So we transfer the control to, to the custom stack and let the stack one start running. Uh, so we only need to have either pop EBP return and leave or something like that to switch the, to switch the, the stack. Which is available is most of the binary. Uh, so the step zero, the advantage is that actually you can, uh, in the next step, you will have the full control of the stack and you don't need to care about the SQMR or whatsoever any longer because the step one can consist of any byte including the known byte uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the new custom uh, stack itself. And it's very practical in most of the binary, we have survey like most, most of the distribution, like Linux distribution, and we survey all of the binary. And actually, uh, the thing we need is available in all of the binary we, we check. Uh, basically, we only need uh, three ROP gadgets for the uh, stage zero, which is some load register, uh, some S or sub memory, and uh, one of the stack pointer mani manipulation where it's something like pop EBP and leave or something like that. And for the stage one strategy, so the, the, the stage one could be anything like I mentioned before. The stage one could be the chain return to Lipsy code. Uh, now it's, be, it's become very easy where you can transfer all the data and the location of the stack you know and everything. So it's very easy to do the trend return to Lipsy. 
or you can return back to mProtect to actually make the, the, the memory become uh, executable again, then transfer the control to the, to the, to the new place with the, the normal cell code. And this one, this way also work on most of the distribution asset, uh, like PAS, uh, GRSEC, uh, patch, security patch, actually they, if you enable like M protect re restriction and this won't work, uh, or maybe you can put a fully ROP cell code there, uh, which is simple as well after the, uh, because the state one, there's no limitation uh, you don't need to care about the randomized arrest space. You don't need to care about ASCII more. You don't need to care about NX anything. So, in the state one, you can do anything you want. Uh, so basically, uh, this one is the recap on how you do the return to the PLT. Uh, so in the binary, in <coughs> you have the PLT and the guard, then uh, the real address in the libc thing like this, so you can actually return to the PLT instead of uh, you like return directly to the address in the, of the function in the libc. Uh, so the, the problem here now is like how you actually you can rezone the runtime library address. Uh, so the thing is that uh, sometimes the, the libc function uh, there is not available in the binary itself. Let's say I want to know the address of uh, the uh, string copy in the libc, and since the, the address is random, randomized, you don't know the base uh, address of the library, and in the binary itself, there's, there's no string copy used, used in, the, in the binary itself, so there's no PLT uh, entry or anything for that. Uh, so in this one, you will need to rezone the libc run uh, address uh, in the runtime. So let's say if I want to know the address of system, and in in the binary itself, there is some some libc function. Let's say bring app was used. Uh, so what I can do is I can rezone it in the runtime by actually calculated it. Uh, let's say from the from the from the library when it's, it's running and it loads into the memory, right? The base array can be random. Uh, however, the offset between two functions is still the same. <coughs> uh, so what I can do is actually, if I want to know the address of the system, what I can do is like I can calculate what is the offset between the bring app and system. And from this one, I can just add the offset into the bring app and I have the address of the, of the system. Uh, for this reason, we actually can uh, rezone and calculate any address uh, of the function in the libc, and there is uh, gadgets available in all of the binary. Uh, so we uh, for the for for this one, we have a couple of different uh, techniques for this, like God overwriting or dereferencing. De uh, so for the God overwriting, we this one is like one of the favorite um, method for let's say the format string where you override the code entry of some uh, libc function uh, to the some lo other uh, value to call uh, the other code you want. Uh, so the step for this one is basically we load the offset into the register and add that register, add that value in uh, which is load into the register to the that memory location which is the code entry. Let's say you want to uh, to rezone the, the address of the system uh, in the libc. So what you can do is you calculate the offset between system and bring app. Then you load it into the register. Then add that value into the got entry of bring app. So now the got entry of bring bring app actually point to the system in the map. So we don't we don't know the base address of the, of the libc, but however we know that. Now is the got entry of that bring app. It now contain the value of uh, it point to the system in the in the libc. Then uh, at the end, after we do that, we can just return to the PLT entry. And the ROP gadget for that is basically you only need two, which is one in load register and the other one is add or sub memory, which is this one, this one, and this one is enough. 
So for example, here is an example that you want to uh, to resolve. Uh, you you want to to have uh, you have want to know the the address of the exact VE. Uh, so you can call to your, so you can exact something else. Uh, but the binary itself in the God table itself there's no exact VE. So you, now you need to uh, resolve uh, the address of the exact VE in order to call it. And uh, what in this one basically it just override the printf got entry and make it become the address of exact VE. <coughs> so basically here's an example of the payload. Uh, this is the address of the print app in the PLT, and this one is the address of the print app in the God uh, table. And uh, I think the payload it may be a bit uh, hard to see, but uh, basically here is like this one is uh, the address of the, the custom stack which is in the data session. So the benefit of this one is you know the exact value of the the, the you, you can control fully control the stack. Uh, so in the this one, let's say this one is the is the address which point to one of the rock gadget where it spoke EBP in red, which means load the value into EBP. So for this one, it will load this value into B, <coughs> sorry this value into the EBP. And the next one is spoke ECH, spoke EBH, or something like that. And uh, you see this value is actually the exact VE minus bring F is this one is the offset, which means the offset between exec VE and bring app inside the, the in, inside the libc itself. Uh, because we know that the, the, the offset will be always const, uh, constant, right? And at the end, actually, what we do is, uh, we, this one is, is the, the value, I mean, bring app, because, because you see, in this one, we have the gadget like something add EBP with some value, uh, with, uh, EBP plus some value, this one the address with the ECX value. So what we do is actually ECX, we load with this value, and the uh, EBP, we load with this value. And this value actually the bring F got address uh, minus this one because basically the gadget we have is it add something like this, so we have to, to, to offset that. Uh, so basically after this one, uh, we Actually, got, get the 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 the, the, the got entry of bring app. It actually will be added this value. So one is add this value is become the address of the asset VE in the library. <coughs> and the other way to do that is the got got dereferencing. De so in the got overwriting in the previous slide, actually we actually override the the entry of bring app to the asset VE. So in case we don't want to do that, we can resolve dynamically and we just jump to that, uh, that location. So the step could be like load the offset, which is, you know, let's say the, exec, the system and exec VE and bring app, you load the offset of that one into the register. Add, add that register with the memory location of the bring app got entry. Uh, then once you have that value, you can just jump or call that register. Uh, for example, you need to have something like load register, add register, and jump. So this one, for example, this one is uh, pop EBX, <coughs> EEX, and EBX. Then you can load that two value in. Then here you have some like let's say add EAX into that whatever uh, the value inside this memory location to EAX. So now EAX contain the address of whatever. Uh, 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 libc function you want to resolve, then the last thing you return into like cone ex or jump ex or something like that. Uh, for example, this one is an example of like you dereferencing de de from the bring app to exec pe. So it's quite the same with uh, previous example, except that at the end of the things, we actually cone ex instead of cone the the bring app got entry. So in this dereferencing, the bring app got entry is still the, is still instead. That means we don't modify that. We don't override the got entry of bring app, but we just like rezone the address of the exec VE based on the current address of bring app. Uh, so the question of all of this is, what is the availability of the got manipulation gadgets? Uh, so. <coughs> 
actually, this is available in the Asheri function, which is generated by GCC compiler. Uh, so which means any program you compile with GCC, <coughs> this thing will be available. So we do have end up of GetGet. It's just like this, it end up of GetGet for us to do the, the stash zero, the, the full stash zero uh, payload. And it's available in all of the binary compiled by GCC, which is pretty good. Uh, for example, got overwriting get, get we can find in the destructor uh, or some detour iOS function and constructor. So this is actually content end up of thing for us to use for got overwriting and got deferencing. Uh, so I mentioned before, like this, this one in this assemble actually available in something like this one or this one. So <coughs> so actually for the catalog, right, we, we don't need to have own of the ROP get, get We don't care about that. What we want to do is we want to have some way to be, to be writing the aspect very practical and it's reliable and it will work in different across distribution and things like that. And uh, it's not too much dependent on the binary itself. <coughs> so that's why we, are, we were talking about those accessory function in the GCC where it's actually, it's less dependent. I mean, I don't care about what the program doing is because no get get is only available in distrustor and contrastor uh, function for of the libc. Uh, of the GCC generated uh, program. Uh, so actually we need only a few of gadgets. Basically we need one of the load register gadgets. We need one of the add or sub memory. And this one is optional. I mean it's not necessary to have it. But if there is, if there is available something like this and uh, we can do much more things. So basically we only need only a few of the ROP get, get which is, uh, because you, you cannot really expect that you have a lot of different things where you can do like arbitrary computation in the real, uh, so because the, the thing is very dependent on like specific target and things like that. So the, we, the way we're doing it actually, we're trying to minimize the number of ROP get, get just end up to do the step zero. Then uh, based on the thing I just present, so we, uh, we're trying to write some of the library where we can do all the automation of all kind of that thing we present before. So you know, like calculate menu, calculate all that kind of thing, like got overwriting, uh, like finding the ROP get, get and do the re got overwriting, dereferencing, de and all kind of that kind of thing actually will, will take a lot of time to do manually. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to have some of the tool where it can help to generate and search for the required gadget, help you to generate the state one payload, help you generate the state zero payload, and lost the exploit. So we call it a return oriented exploit, make easy. Uh, so basically it's have the functionality to generate the gadget from the binary, from the, uh, uh, from the uh, library, libc, thing like that, and help you to be uh, some of the command line things to help you to do like search for specific gadget or something like that if you want. And it can uh, have a generator to help you to automate all of the things you need. So something like this one. So we, this one actually we implement very, very simple ROP tool. So it's not, it, because it's actually not required to have complexity here. And uh, let's go for the demonstration. So we have one, one, the demonstration for the, Because my laptop has some problems, so I just borrow the laptop from Mars. 
So I just play the, the video instead of uh, having the live demo. So this one is an assemble of the vulnerable binary, where it's basically it's just noting the simple one with the string copy. Uh, this one is actually uh, the the system itself have like NIS, ASLR and things like that. However, the the binary itself is, is so this one is demonstration of the of the uh, ROP cell which it does simple thing where you can do something like generate the get get for the libc for the binary uh, searching for different things so we just uh, this one is just implement very basic like try uh, tree with uh, like generate and help you to like searching for different things uh, we we think that enough for building most of the things already so we don't need to have something like very complicated uh, so here is an example of the of the exploit. So uh, <coughs> you see, this one is an example of how you write the exploit for that one using our way. So actually, we have the Python uh, library to do that. Uh, so. You can see you can just like specify like RP payload something with the program libc and something like that, and uh, sorry, then you can just set the custom stack. So this one actually it can be automated as well, but uh, in case you want to specify by yourself, you can put it like this. I mean this one is actually the memory you find in the let, let's say data section or whatever variable. Uh, memory session you want to use for the custom stack like I mentioned before. Uh, then in the in the library itself is already provided own kind of like got overwriting like I mentioned before, or like trying to help you to to build the stack one payload. Let's say uh, set UID or clone some of whatever function thing like that is already in the library, so you can just use it. Uh, so, for example, in the in the uh, for example, this one is like you override the get good user ID, uh, override it into the set uh, I use UID uh, things. So this one is ensemble that the library already provides you the way to do the got overriding. So you don't need to know like how exactly you do the got overriding and calculate and thing like that. Uh, that one only automate. So you only need to clone something like this and it's all done. Uh, by the library itself. Then for building the state one, for example, the state one, what I want to do is the first thing I want to do, like I clone the uh, set uh, IE UID and make it into like uh, 99, uh, mi minus one, 99 whatsoever. So I want to set it into nobody whatsoever, something like that. Or maybe zero if you want to become root or whatsoever, thing like that. Then for the state one, I can do the same thing for the state one. Uh, like I do the, the got override, the set IE UID. Uh, since before, right, I override the get U UID to set IE UID. So now I want to do override again. So I override from set IE UID into this one, uh, exec VE, because in the state one, I want to call exec VE some program. Uh, in this case, I want to call, let's say, cell, for example, slash bin slash cell. So uh, what I can do, I can say, okay, I want to do got override, then uh, next, I want to do the state one SFP, the target binary, and the slash bin slash cell. So this one basically is how you write the split with our library, with our tool. So it's very simple to do this kind of thing, and it's automate most of the thing which is complex. And after the end of this one, we can do the cone to generate the 
uh, generate the state zero and state one, then just lost the program and it's like automatically generate on the ROP payload to do multiple of the thing like transfer the payload and uh, set up the new stack, blah, 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 blah. So all of those will be done automatically. So you don't need to, to care about that. Uh, so that one is the exploit. So now you can just lose the exploit with your vulnerability program. And uh, from here you can see, uh, sorry, let I. So this one is like I enable the <coughs> the debug thing so you can see more information. So when you run this one and the load the library, it will loading the gadget from the whatever already generated. Or if it's not available, then it will try to generating the, the gadget by itself. Uh, and then it will trying to build the state one and state zero payload and using the string copy function. And you see this one, it, it, it generate the multiple of string copy uh, things. So this string copy, multiple string copy, like I mentioned before, where the state zero need to transfer the state one into the, into the custom stack. So this one is the payload generated uh, to do that. So basically the payload is like the address, 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 and return address. So this one is like kind of like chain return to address kind of things. Uh, return to libc kind of thing, but this one actually return to the PLT entry. Uh, in case there's no string copy, we can override that one using the God overwriting or whatsoever to make it become string copy. Uh, so this one is the state zero payload. So basically, I need to transfer the multiple. So this this value is the, you know, this value is the value of the state one payload. So I want, I need to transfer all of this value into into the new stack. Uh, so basically, like I mentioned before, we are searching for B4 in the binary. So we know, okay, in this array, there's a B4. Uh, so we generate the string copy to copy that's B4 into the new stack. Then we search for, okay, what the next value is 84, something like that. And we search for this string and we, the longest as possible. So we find that there's three bytes inside the binary itself. Uh, we contain this, so we generate the string copy to, to copy, copy like that. Uh, so one is done, this one is the state zero payload. You see on the address and thing return, blah, blah, here. Then this one is state zero. Then uh, you see one is done, it actually successfully exploit. Then you have a cell here with the user ID is 99, where it's in the, in the exploit before we mentioned, we actually want to want to set I UID into 99. So there's another example is the lip tip uh, uh, problem in the CV 210 uh, 2067. So here is assemble, so we just like uh, using the RPM to install the lifted uh, tool. Is it available in uh, in Fedora? So if you see in this one, we're trying to the as we actually gener we generate we have the the tool using the library to generate the tip file. When you open the tip file with that. With that file, actually, it's exploit the, the bug, and actually, you see it's run the BC here. This one is the BC command, uh, BC program. So we just tr uh, try to do something like that. Uh, so for assemble, this one is some of the library itself. It has the PLT, got uh, entry, rewrite, thing like that. So you can sh look in the, in the, in the thing like got overwriting, that kind of things, where it's do all the thing automatically for, for you, so you don't need to care about like how exactly you can do that, got dereferencing. 
and for the lip tip, the 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 aspirate we just show for the lip tip, right? It's also the aspirate for this one is pretty simple and short. Uh, the same thing, I do the got overwriting SHVE with the get option something. Then uh, you see, previously it's called like BC. After I, I uh, in the demonstration, I actually run the uh, the, B, the 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 calculator command uh, uh, program. Uh, when I open the the tip file generated by this tool with the lib tool, uh, so you see it's simple like step one with SXVE this program. Then uh, uh, I can do like uh, overwriting with turn string uh, string k compared to string copy. This one the assemble of this. And you see the aspect is basically just a few lines like this one, and it's generate all of the chain return to libc and rop get get to do all kind of things. Uh, so I think I'm out of uh, time already, so it's almost done as well. Uh, the counter measure, so uh, our methodology actually doesn't work with the PIE. Uh, however, if you in some cases, actually, you can uh, try to prove out the base as red. In, for example, is the server side where it keep fog or the new connection. We mean every time it fog, it's still the same memory map. So you can do that and you can prove out the the base as red. Then once you have the base as red, you can apply the same techniques to do that. And the PA is not uh, is not widely adopted by vendor anyway. So they only use it for some critical network. Uh, application. Uh, we also support for the macOS, but however, macOS is much simpler uh, because uh, the dynamic loader here is the only way load at the fixed location and uh, the import is reliable. So basically, uh, it's very simple to do this. You, you still can apply the same methodology where state, call, state zero is to do the sequence of the data from the dynamic loader itself and the, the second, and you can do the more simpler version is like some small cell code loader and the state zero is the cell code. So uh, this one is for assemble of this very simple thing for the Mac OS and it will, uh, it will work. But however, this one is just some extra thing. So uh, I think I almost finished with the talk. So any question? If you do have a question, please raise your hand. I was just asking, um, have you released the Redmi tool? Is it open source? I, I think the first version already released on the, on the website, but uh, the new version we haven't released yet. So the new version support a lot of different uh, OS and things like that. Okay, if there's not any more questions, I would say uh, we're actually already going into the coffee break.